I'm reading a book and the book I've chosen to read is The Man Who Changed Everything, The Life of James Clark Maxwell. It's a biography that I'm reading at the moment of his uh, work it's by Basil Mahone and it's an interesting thing because we've often heard of Maxwell and his equations but what we often don't know is his relatively short life what what he did what his achievements are and I have to say that one of the things that I've been amazed at is you just go through and wow he did that he did that as well and he did that and he did the things he's famous for you know it's it's um, quite amazing anyway so here is my uh, the section I've chosen. It's from his early years when he was at Edinburgh um, at the university. He um, had to study a general course, as you did at all universities virtually at the time, and um, he had to. He chose natural philosophy, mathematics, and logic. Natural philosophy being what we would now call science. Anyway. He had chosen to start with um, uh, natural philosophy, mathematics and logic, and the science and mathematics um, lectures were too elementary for him. So, But he was taken by the philosophy and logic um, lectures. And in fact, he went to Sir William Hamilton's talks on logic. And... This is where I'm going to start reading. To understand what, his philosophic, what this philosophical approach was and why it was so important, we must take a short historical diversion. David Hume, the great 18th century Scottish philosopher, had put the cat amongst the pigeons with his notion of scepticism, that nothing can be proved except in mathematics, and that much of what we take to be fact is merely conjecture. This alarmed some of his hard-headed countrymen who reacted by starting their own common sense school. They thought it was daft to doubt whether the world exists and wrong to doubt whether God exists. But these th things given, they rejected any belief or method that did not proceed directly from observed fact. The way to make scientific progress, they said, was by simple accretion of experimental results and narrow interpretation of the principle of induction that the Englishman Francis Bacon had advocated more than a century earlier. Imagination had no place in their system. In fact, the common sense school could hardly have been more wrong. Empirical evidence is vital, but, in all, but all innovative scientists are strongly imaginative and make full use of working hypotheses which are often drawn by analogy with other branches of science. Luckily the school's adherents eventually realised this and came to a view that truly was common sense. Analogies and imaginative hypotheses can be wonderful but should be kept in their place as scientists should remain sceptical about his own pet fancies, even when they had led to progress. Many scientists cease to be creative when they fail this test and become slaves to their own creations. Maxwell never did.